Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the new features in Adobe Fresco 1.3.0. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we have an update to the fill or the paint bucket tool. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a little bit of paint here. This is just three different swatches of color that overlap. Then we'll select the fill tool, and we can use this just to click on areas of color to flood fill them. I'm gonna go ahead and do an undo here. If we hold down our shortcut button now by tapping and holding, now if we click, we're going to flood erase different areas of color like so. Another update to the bucket or the fill tool is the ability to recolor your line art. So what we wanna do is just sketch something here in black and white. I'm using the pencil brush. Next, I'll select the fill tool. And with that sketch on a separate layer, I'll just click on that layer and I'll choose lock transparency. That will make it so I can't do anything other than change the color of the pixels that are on that layer. And if I go ahead and choose a different color, let's say this blue color, and then I click on that black line art, it's going to change that to blue. It won't change the background color, only the line art. Now if I choose a different color and I try to fill it, it seems like nothing is happening here. So maybe it only works on black and white line art. You'll have to do a bunch of undos here to get back. Now the shortcut for undo is just to tap with two fingers to undo. And if you tap with three fingers, then you will redo. But on a Wacom tablet, that also opens up the radial menu, which can mess things up. If you want to disable this shortcut for undo and redo, you can go to your app settings and under input and then touch, you have an option to disable undo redo gesture. Now this next feature is not new, but this is something that I missed in some of my other tutorials. You can double tap on your shortcut button to lock it into the mode that you want to use. For example, I'm locked into dry brush blending and I don't have to hold down that shortcut to keep blending. Now if I want to disable that, I just tap again and then double tap to turn it back on. Now this works for some of the other shortcut modes as well. The next new feature deals with the color chip. We'll go into the color chip here and now we have some libraries that we can choose from. So we can choose from fresco colors, which are pre-chosen themes or we have access to our libraries of color that are saved in the Adobe Creative Cloud that we might have created using Photoshop or Illustrator. The next new feature is that high-res exports are now available with the free version of Adobe Fresco. So that's good news to anybody who created artwork with the free version and wants to be able to export a usable version of it. Users can now also report bugs. You can do this from the question mark up in the top, and if you ever experience a bug, you can report it. The next new feature is the ability to import PSB files. These are large files from Photoshop. You can do that from import on the home page, then you can choose a PSB file. This next feature I'm really excited about, and this was one of the things that was kind of holding Adobe Fresco back in my opinion, and that's a dedicated eraser tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put down some pencil here. I'm gonna tap and hold my shortcut button and just drag it to a better position here. Now in previous versions of Fresco, you'd have to hold down this button in order to enter eraser mode, which is all right, but I prefer a dedicated eraser tool so that you get more variety over the eraser type. So let's take a look at the new way of erasing. I'm gonna select the eraser tool, and this is a brush tool just like the other brush tools. It's a pixel-based brush, and you can see all the variants here. Let's just try this one called Gritty Square. We get this nice textured effect. And this is maybe a bit too sharp and doesn't really work for getting a pencil look. So I'm gonna do some undos. Let's try another variant. Let's try rubber. This is kind of like a rubber eraser. And I really like the way this looks. It lifts the pencil in a nice natural way, leaving a little bit of residue on the paper. Another new feature that I'm really excited about is the ability to clear a layer quickly and easily. This was really holding the older versions back. You just tap on a layer and then choose clear layer and it clears the contents of that layer without you having to delete the layer. The next new feature is a straight edge tool. We can get to that down in the bottom right. And when we click on that, it puts up a ruler on our screen and we can move that around. We can twist it with touch to rotate the angle. And then we draw along the side of the ruler like we would with a real ruler. You can kind of drag it around and position it. It does feel a little bit sticky and it can be hard to move it precisely, but it works pretty well to get a nice straight edge. But there's yet another way to get a straight line and that is to turn on an experimental feature. We're gonna to go to app settings and down at the bottom under experimental, let's turn on hold for straight line. Now if I start drawing and I don't lift my pen up, I just tap and hold, it'll straighten my line and then I'll continue to get a straight line that I can drag around and position wherever I like. 
you'll notice I'm also getting tilt in my line. So if I keep my pen more upright, then my line will be thinner. If I have it more at an angle, then my line will be thicker as if I have my pencil tilted while I'm drawing on a ruler. This is a really cool feature and a really great way to draw straight lines. The next feature that we'll look at deals with the UI or the user interface. If we go to the app settings, we can now enable a light or a dark UI mode. I prefer the dark mode, and so that's what I'm using right now. Moving on to the next new feature, we can now nudge transformations. I'm gonna to go to the transform tool, and all I need to do is just tap with one finger repeatedly to nudge in a particular direction. So there I nudge to the right a bit, but just to show you how this is working, I'm gonna create a new layer and just draw a vertical line here so that you can see how far this is moving when I'm tapping. So now I'll go ahead and go back to that layer that I want to nudge. I'll go back to the transform tool to enable transformation, and I'll just tap repeatedly. And this is nudging at one pixel, so if you have a very large canvas, it's not gonna move very far. And if you hold down your shortcut button, then you can nudge in 10 pixel increments, which will move it around a lot faster. You can even nudge it diagonally if you go in the corners. And the last new feature that we'll take a look at is the ability to share a link. I'll go to my home menu here. I'll click on the menu button next to the image I wanna share and I'll choose share link. Now I can share just a preview of the artwork with people or if I want to, I can share the ability to download the artwork itself. So those were some of the new updates in Adobe Fresco version 1.3.0. If you're interested in learning more about Adobe Fresco, I have a more in-depth tutorial that you can check out. And if you'd like to download some custom brushes for Adobe Fresco, those are available on my website at aaronrutten.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.